I get this question like a couple times a week, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube, and it's how to do an LS engine swap or how much does an LS engine swap cost. So I'm going to try to answer like all your questions here. It's kind of a difficult question because every day there's new things coming out. Um, and I don't know your budget or what car you're going in. And like if you're gonna put an if you're gonna put an LS in like a Range Rover, or if you're gonna put an LS in a Chevelle, it's just two separate things, and they're really dif different. But I'm gonna be basically be telling you the absolute basics to like any LS swap. So the first thing you need is your car and your LS engine. Um, there's kind of like two ways of thinking about this. There's the car engine and there's the truck engine. Uh, so the truck engines are the 4.8, 5.3, 6.062. They're in like I think 2001 and up. I think after like 2014 and up, it's an LT. But they're all basically the same thing. Uh, the LT though is direct injection, and the LS isn't. But they're all just truck engines. Um, they all have like separate names, like L33, LY96. They're all slightly different, maybe like a different intake manifold or a different uh, cam gear, or they have like different injectors, stuff like that. But an LS is an LS. And then there's the cars, which is LS1, LS2, LS3, LS7, and LS9. Uh, depending on your budget, it's where you're gonna go. Uh, if you have a ton of money, uh, LS3 is the way to go. They make a ton of horsepower, they're, they're easy. Uh, but you can make the same amount of horsepower on a 5.3 truck engine for sure and for way cheaper It just depends on where you want to go. You know what I mean? Because your LS3 is going to be like, like my LS3 makes 525 horsepower it works every day Not a problem, but my 5.3 turbo build. Let's see how this goes how reliable this is going to be But it just kind of depends on how much you're trying to spend um, If you have a ton of money go buy a crate engine go buy a brand new transmission But the thing is with that is you're going to spend a lot more money um, what I recommend doing is going and buying a used engine, whether it's a like preferably complete dropout. Um, if you're going to just go buy some $500 junkyard engine without the front accessories or anything on it, you're going to spend a lot of money. Um, the complete dropout's the way to go. If you can, like best case scenario, is if you can go to go to the guy's car or to the junkyard or whatever, drive the car around, make sure it works good, runs good, and then you're straight. Or if you can go get like a complete drive out from like a place that has warranty or a junkyard that has a warranty, so that way when you put this thing in there and you start it up the first time and you find out there's like a spun rod, I mean a spun bearing, like you're not screwed. So that's what I would do. Um, my truck has a used truck engine out of a 5.3. It's out of a 2006 Envoy. Kind of a weird real car to get it out of, but hey man, that, that thing runs great. And then my Chevelle is an LS3. It's a crate engine. The thing I didn't think about though when I did this, this is my first build, I didn't know as much as I know now, is that when you buy a crate engine, you're literally just buying the engine. You're not buying anything else. You're not buying the front accessories. You're not buying the flex plate. You're not buying a torque converter. You know the transmission, all the all the random bolts, all that kind of stuff. Every like the uh, your intake pipe, all that stuff is just separate. So it kind of like every time it's like 40 50 100 200 bucks and all of a sudden you spend a thousand dollars you know what i mean whereas if you buy something with the front accessories and everything on it you save a ton of money uh the first thing is probably if it fits in there with your truck pan or your car pan i know a lot of cars uh they use the f-body camaro pan to get them in the cars and then the trucks like my truck has the stock oil pan it works fine uh but if you're not lucky and they don't fit um, there's a bunch of companies like Holly and TSP. They sell LS swap uh, conversion pans. They're just much shallower, and so you can fit them on the older cars. Um, I don't know. I have the Holly one in this thing because that's the only one I knew about when I bought this. But I'm, I bought a TSP one. Same thing for Rafa's Nova. They're basically the same thing. Uh, they're a hundred dollars cheaper. I like them. If you can get the one that's satin black, it looks cooler. Your engine looks cooler. Some some nice little points even though you're probably gonna get that ridiculously dirty. But yeah, the first thing you probably need is, an, is you wanna check if you can even use the stock oil pan or if you have to get an aftermarket one. Here, let me see how much they cost. So, the Holly oil pan is like $375. Um, I think if you get like different ones, they're more expensive or cheaper. I think the basic one is the 302-1. I think that's $375. Um, 
if you get, I think they have like the 302-2 and 302-3. Basically the difference is uh, they have more clearance for a stroker engine or they have a oil return. So this USB one's between like $240, like almost like $200, $300 I think. Uh, again, they have like different pans too. They have the basic LS swap pan where it's just nothing special. And then they have the one with cut out for the, for the stroker engine or if you have an LS or if you have turbos I should say for the oil drains. Um, so yeah, you're about like between like 250 to 400 bucks on an oil pan. The next thing is uh, engine motor mounts and transmission cross members. Um, here it kind of just kind of gets, it just, it's like everything with this LS swap stuff. There's just so many options. Um, in the Chevelle, I have $100 UMI Performance one. I think they were like 100, $120 or $130 ones. Uh, my truck has Church Boys. Uh, Rafa's car has um, the Hooker Performance or the Holly ones. Uh, I know Dirty Dingo makes a bunch of them. Um, you can go on eBay and find a ton of motor mounts. Um, I've even seen where if you're putting your if you're putting an LS in like a strange swap and they know someone doesn't sell a kit for you, uh, they sell kits where where you can make your motor mounts basically. Um, but anywhere there, I mean, they're between $100 and like $400. Um, the nicer it is, the prettier it is, and the cheaper it is. It's just, it just has to work. Uh, same thing with cross members, like, uh, transmission cross members. I've seen literally, like, people sell, like, like on my truck, I have the eBay one. I think it's, like, $100. It's just a pipe with some use. And then in my Chevelle, I think I have the, the, uh, the Holly one as well. Same thing as Rafa's. Rafa's is the Holly one. Uh... I don't know, I like the Holly stuff because it kind of just works. There's not really a lot of hassle. Uh, I did hate uh, r installing Rafa's, that was annoying, but yeah, you can't really, there's not really much to do. Like some of them are just pretty. Oh, the other thing is some of them slide forward and some of them slide black, back. Uh, that's something you need to pay attention to because sometimes like some motor mounts don't, um, they don't work with uh, some cross members and some cross members don't work with uh, some motor mounts. So definitely make sure that they work together. Uh, if you can get a slider, that's kind of like the best thing because you can position your engine wherever you want and it's perfect. The other thing is if you don't really want to screw around, IC ICT Billet sells something where you just bolt it to the engine and it's already um, made to just bolt onto these GM ones. Uh, but they sell a bunch of kits, literally just look up like LS swap, your car, motor mounts and if they don't pop up, you're kind of screwed and you have to make them but I bet they make a bunch of them. All right, headers, I'm kinda gonna go over quick because headers are just like a super long story. Um, there's a million headers out there. Uh, as long as it fits your application, that's all that really matters. Uh, you can spend anywhere from $200 to $1,000. You can get them Cerakoted, Chrome, or just regular or painted. Um, I don't know, headers are not that exciting to me. There's also like uh, shorties, mid-length and, lo and long tube headers. It just depends on what you want. Um, I would kind of research that stuff uh, for what you want. It's kind of hard for me to tell you, you know what I mean? Because like the ones on my truck, the ones on my truck, are, like, they're the Headman headers, they're like two or three hundred bucks. They sound great, they're awesome. I have these quicker ones that are like seven hundred dollars in my, in my Chevelle, and I think I had to bang a couple tubes to get them to fit. Uh, as long as they fit, that's really all that matters in my book, but that's up to you. The next thing is what's going to run your car. Uh, again, with this LS stuff, there's just a million options uh, you could do like a stock style or you can get, all right the first thing is if you're on a super budget you can get the stock harness you got off your car with the complete dropout and there's a bunch of guys on how to pin them and basically cut out all the stuff you don't need and keep the stuff you do need and get them to work or there's a company called PSI uh, PSI sells like stock style replacement harnesses so you call them tell them hey I got this year engine with this stuff and I got this year transmission and they'll build you um, a harness and they'll send it to you and all you gotta do is plug it in and wire it up and you're straight. Uh, there's also like standalones. I know like Haltech does some stuff. Uh, Holly does some stuff, the Terminator X. I'm gonna run the Holly stuff. I like it. Uh, it looks ridiculously simple. It seems like you wire up the engine in like 10 minutes and I just know. I like it that it's simple. You wire it up, everything comes labeled. You click it and you go and that's what I want. Um, the Terminator X is like a thousand dollars, or th I think it's like thirteen hundred dollars if you do one with engine and trans. Uh, the other thing is, I think the PSI ones are like six hundred dollars, and then the stock ones are whatever they cost and how many times you have to cut that thing out to work. But 
that's up to you and your budget. Uh, those are the options. There's also, I bet there's a ton of ways, like you probably run on like Mega Squirter, just like a bunch of standalones, but I'm not too well versed on it. I On this thing, I have the GM Performance one, and that's like a, a cut of stock one. It looks terrible, so I'm ready to upgrade and go to the Holly FI. The other thing is with the Holly FI is, uh, or like these standalone ones, you tune it yourself. There's no extra program. You don't pay for service. You plug it into your laptop. You do whatever you want. You might blow up your engine if you're not a professional tuner, obviously, but like there's more more control. Whereas on these things, you can tune them, but you need HP tuners. Uh, it's a service you have to pay for. It's an extra thing. And I don't know, it seems a lot more confusing than the Holly stuff. So the next thing uh, is your front accessories. Um, your front accessories, like on Rafa's Nova, his, his, I think it's his alternator, doesn't clear. Um, so he's gonna have to buy like something from like ICT Billet. Uh, Holly sells something too. Like on my Chevelle, I have the, the Holly bracket kit. Um, it's kind of, it just moves everything around basically. You have to do it or just like we're, we're gonna do on Rafa's Nova, we might just cut a hole in the hood. You know what I mean? Uh, most people want it clean though. We're kind of just like throwing this thing together and having fun. So you just gotta go find a bracket. That's the same thing with like headers and everything. You need to do the research for your car. Uh, Holly sells stuff though. IC2 Build sells stuff. I think Dirty Dingo sells stuff. Um, they're just brackets, nothing really too exciting, but you need them uh, to mount your accessories on. Right, so the next thing is your radiator. Uh, so the thing on these LS engines is they have a steam port. Uh, so when you get an LS swap radiator, there's two things, either you get a radiator with a steam port uh, or you can get a just a regular radiator and then they sell this little like steam port uh, adapter that you put in between your your hoses. Uh, yeah, definitely do that or you will blow these things up. Um, you can cap them off too, but I don't really suggest doing that. Definitely run the steam port. Uh, you can, like on my Chevelle, my Chevelle has a, uh, has like an $800 Griffin radiator. It's just a, what I screwed up on is they're not, my inlet and outlet are, are not on the same side. At least, are they? No, they're not. So, kind of a dumb thing. Uh, I didn't realize that they had LS swap radiators and that was a big deal. Same thing with my truck. My truck just has a regular radiator. It's uh, a $300 uh, Griffin four core radiator. They both, they both work great. One was obviously more expensive than the other. They both work. Uh, I'll probably put Griffin stuff in my stuff from now on. I just, I like how cheap it is and how good it works. And the nice thing about the Griffin stuff is it's a lifetime warranty. Uh, when I was in Arizona last, I guess one of the, the welds cracked and they just replaced it, no questions. And that was sweet. I like that. Um, but yeah, on a radiator, you could spend anywhere from like $200 to $1,000. The next thing too is fans. Like on my, on my truck, I have like the $200 uh, F body Camaro fans, fans, and we like, cut the uh, the plastics and basically just like t um, zip tied it to it. Uh, my Chevelle has the Griffin fans. It looks better. Uh, I'm probably gonna upgrade the fans on my truck because I want it to look nicer. Another thing I just like remembered right now is fuel system. So you can't use your carbureted fuel system. Uh, most of them were like pulling it from their mechanical fuel pump, uh, or if you had an external fuel pump, uh, it probably won't work. Uh, cause I think you only need like 7 PSI to run a carburetor and I know with the LS you need at least 60 PSI, maybe it's less, but I, I think the last time I remember, the last time I looked this up it was 60 PSI. So you need a fuel system that's going to be able to run 60 PSI constantly to the engine. Um, they sell kits for this stuff. Uh, you can run, Holly sells a kit where if you have fuel cell, you can just drop this kit in. Uh, what other stuff? There's also like. You could also run an external pump. I have an A1000. I need 1000. I have I have an Aeromotive uh, fuel fuel tank in mines. Um, it's like one of those direct replacements. I don't really like it. I'm about to change it. Go to Tank Sync because the it just I can't do a donut in that thing and it pisses me off. So I'm gonna swap that out. Um, my my truck has a Boyd tank. Uh, that thing is sick. We're actually working on something right now. I'm working on this right now because I'm gonna go turbo. I'm gonna run two. Uh, two fuel pumps but you'll see that in a, in a later video but yeah it's just like it just depends on the power too that's another thing more fuel more air is more power so it just depends on what you want I mean for the absolute basics I would just go get an LS swap uh, an, a, an EFI tank I would just go get an EFI tank because it's just easier they figured it all out for you if you want, really wanted to run an external tank it's up to you but 
I don't really want to blow up my engine from like leaning out or not having the fuel pressure, so I'm just not going to do that. Um, you could spend anywhere from like two hundred dollars on a on a couple fuel pumps and some some lines, or like I think the tanks ink one is like six or seven hundred bucks. I know that Aeromotive tank was a thousand dollars, which is retarded because it doesn't really work. Uh, that boy tank is like I think it was I got that with the trucks. So I didn't pay for that, but I think they're like six or seven hundred dollars too. Um, I don't know. It's, that just depends on you. The other thing is like let's say they don't make a uh, like an, a tank for yours or or like I don't like my buddy Dane. Dane just got his to work. Like he got his old gas tank to work, and. I don't know, there's just a million ways to do this stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of hard for me to answer the whole LS swap and how much this is going to cost. Um, you could do it for $5,000, you could do it for $10,000, $15,000, You could spend a ridiculous amount of money on this. It just depends on how much you want to spend, you know what I mean? Because uh, you can nick like me and Rafa's car, man. Like, Dude, Rafa's building this car for cheap, you know what I mean? Like, I can't believe how well he's doing. And it's because he's taking his time, he's waiting for deals to come, he's buying it, he's waiting for sales, you know what I mean? I'm just, I can't do that. Like, I just want my cars to run, I want to have fun now. So, I just spend the money. Whatever it costs, I'm going to pay for it. So, it just depends on your attitude. And the other thing is, like, people aren't willing to do the research, you know what I mean? If you want to do an LS swap, like, I'm kind of giving you the basics, but there's, like, a million parts out there. There's all kinds of ways to do this. So it's hard for me to tell you, you know what I mean? Like you could spend you could spend so much money on cars. And especially with these engines, like there's just there's so many accessories. Like just look up LS swap and there's just a million ways to do this. So you kinda have to figure out the way you want it. But the very basics is definitely uh, your engine, transmission, your motor mounts, your transmission cross member. If you need an oil pan, your oil pan swap, you need an oil pan swap, the front accessories and how they fit, and then your headers and your radiator, and then your wiring harness. Those are the very basic things. All LS swaps are going to need this. Uh, you might get lucky in one or two things, two things you don't have to change, but you'll probably have to change most of them. Um, at the first, as far as cost, like I've been like giving you the prices and stuff like that, but you could spend five grand, or you could spend thirty grand. You know what I mean? Like, it just depends. Like, if you're, are you going to buy a $7,000 crate engine or are you going to buy a $500 junk air motor? Are you going to buy, like, a brand new wiring harness or are you going to spend, like, basically no money and cut up the one that you got with your swap? Are you going to, like, are you going to reuse the, your stock accessories or are you going to get these pretty $3,000 accessories? It all just depends on what you want. And, yeah, you kind of have to figure that out. So, I hope I gave you a little bit of insight in this video. And... We'll be back on the truck next week, um, hopefully doing some stuff with the fuel system and getting the front end on. So I hope you enjoyed this video.